Welcome back. Today we talk about how I'm famous now. Oh. We debate climate change with none of the facts. And Rachel makes some weird noises. This is the boardroom. I'm Sarah. And I'm Rachel. Isn't it weird how your parents divorced the second I moved into your neighborhood? It's not a coincidence. So it's been quite an interesting month for me. Yeah. Internet wise, because I'm famous now. Oh. <laughs> Mm, no, <laughs> yeah, I'm. I am a. Um, I'm what I've always wanted to be, which is a D-list internet celebrity, yeah. which I think is the absolute peak of fame. I agree because people comment on your stuff, and people are like, well, "I'd die for you," and I'd be like, "Okay." <laughs> At the same time, you retain a level of like anonymity. Mm. Like, like no paparazzi cares about you. You can go and you know, sort of like you know, binge eat. Uh, in like restaurants and people aren't taking photos of you. Yeah. So it's the best of both worlds. Yeah. And Hank Green commented on your video. That's like, insane. What? That's Lil wild. Yachty wants to be your friend? The fact that, Hank, first of all, I'm surprised Hank Green has a TikTok. I mean, I shouldn't be. He's just branching out. But the fact that I showed up on his for you page <laughs> yeah. is just absurd. <laughs> Yeah, because I imagine it's all like science and like educational and mm-hmm. like those like pelican videos I've seen him talk about. Yeah, and then for you to be in that mix is so interesting. I'm glad. I'm happy that <laughs> this is the only sort of contact that I've had with like the educator side of the internet. Yeah, and they met my content with just sheer and utter bewilderment, <laughs> and that's the reaction that I wanted them to have. Yeah. I'm concerned about... Okay, so let me just say this. I can say this now because um, this is not TikTok. (laughs) TikTok has, I'm not even kidding, has taken down several of my videos, several of them for being inappropriate, which for two of them maybe I could understand. Yeah. Um, They muted my video where I said the N-word, not even even hard ER, Mm. and I explained in the video that that I am black, I am am, uh, blackly black, (laughs) and they were like, no, no, no. This audio is inappropriate, so they muted it. They're censoring you. They're censoring me. TikTok is trying to silence light-skinned black women, (laughs) and I'm offended. If it happened to me, it's going to happen to you. This is a warning. True. So now I'm blocked from posting until, like, tomorrow at, like, 9. That's crazy. Isn't it? I didn't realize how much they, like worry about that. Because I feel like YouTube, it's only like, oh, you use copyrighted music. Shame on you. But they don't, like, block things or whatever. No. At most, they'll, like, demonetize the video. Yeah. And if it's really, really excessive, sometimes entire channels have gotten demonetized. But they normally don't take down videos. Yeah, or at least not for, like, as long as you're not, like, showing, like, nudity, then, like, I feel like it's, like, free game. It is. It's very, very odd. I feel like I'm in Big Brother. (laughs) Yeah. And I, like, every time I refresh my page, I'm just, like, (laughs) <laughs> they think I hope they didn't give me another morning. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, now I have to be a little careful. Mm. This sucks, though, because I was trying to become one of those... I could get that, like, little verified check so I, I could start making money oh, or whatever yeah. from views or whatnot. But now I have to apply again in a month. Dang. That sucks. Right? I think so, yeah. Man. It's wild. It's crazy. So, anyone out there listening... You, you want to sponsor me? You want to sponsor us, <laughs> yeah. this podcast? Give the money. Reach out to us, business contacts. Yeah. In the bio, we are sellouts. <laughs> yeah. we, will, we will sell anything. I will sell anything. And I'm not above that. I want to sell Kid Cuisines. Kid Cuisine, <laughs> if you're listening, I love your product. I still eat them from time to time. Because yeah. it would always be like, it was like a brownie, corn, and mac and cheese. But like once you heat it up, they would all like bleed into each other. <laughs> so there'd always be like corn and the brownie and all. But it was a nice, pleasant surprise. And I'm willing to share that with the world. I think they're a little too bougie of a brand, honestly. I don't think that we're like, <laughs> yeah, we're not we're at, at a that caliber. Level. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. If we could get up to Stouffer's level. Wow. No. Oh my gosh. If I could sell a lasagna, the amount of times that I have like, in a sort of like depression filled haze, just wandered into the 24 hour store at university and just like picked one of those tiny little meaty lasagnas and then just Uh, ate it frozen. I didn't even heat it up. 
I would I would bite into it like a sandwich. Yeah. Stouffer's, if you're listening, be part of our brand. Yeah. We want to work with all the frozen food brands. A hundred percent. I mean, my my goal is to do what like David Dobrik did, where he just had <laughs> some sort of bizarre. I, I'm assuming a lifelong contract with SeatGeek. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, dang, we need to we need to get one at Oge. Yeah. Anyway. We're going to stop talking about money because that's sad. But we do have two shout outs. Yeah, we do. Two legitimate shout outs. We had our first patron on Patreon, Stasia True Love. <laughs> I think that's her legal name. <laughs> uh, link to our Patreon in the bio if you want to donate to our. Um, thank you so much. Yeah. You are uh, a queen, you're an icon. Um, or king, actually. I don't know what gender they identify with. But you are everything to us <laughs> thank you for giving s- some of your hard earned cash or i mean to be, you might you might have stolen it maybe it's your parents we don't know yeah. but thank you so much and then shout out to our second patreon charles duff i like that name charles duff yeah i was gonna make a joke about duff like the beer from the simpsons mm. i was thinking duff like the ace of cakes guy you know him who is that? Duff, he's like not Buddy. He's the better cake guy on the Food Network. I only know the cake boss. Mm. How is, is is he still alive? I feel like he <laughs> he had a heart attack two years ago and then I think no he like he like got into like a bowling accident or something and like broke his finger and like he like what? couldn't bake or like something happened. That's so tragic. True. Um. Uh, so thank you to those two people. Uh. This is just the beginning. We're going to try and get some, like, exclusive content on there. I was thinking we could do that thing where we, like, because it's Patreon. They don't care about, like, copyrighted material. Mm. We could, like, watch movies or, like, really oh, weird. Oh, like, commentary like, on, like, a yes, movie. Yes, like, horrible films <laughs> or just stuff that's or weird. Or that thing with like, the guy in the wall that we were talking about the other episode. Where the guy. The was, boy? Yeah. <laughs> we definitely could. If you want us to watch stuff react to it uh please tell us we would love some suggestions if you if you know any rancid (laughs) rancid films um like killer bean that's one i've heard of it's Mm. literally a a killer bean (laughs) and they have they have little butt cracks but they don't have any orifices so i'm like what is the crack for (laughs) yeah what are they excreting it's just aesthetic yeah so anyway yeah shout out to you two guys you're the best people on the internet actually and that's a fact and we can say that yeah um yeah so now that we actually have people listening to us, like live human beings and not just those weird Russian bots that keep commenting t- to like links of adult websites <laughs> yeah. um, in the comment section, you guys have any questions, any, any problems you'd like us to solve, write us in the comments down below. Yeah. We'll feature you in a video. Or feel free to DM us on Instagram at Boardroom Podcast. Yep. I'm always perusing the DMs, so hit me she up. She is. She's, re- she's refreshing that page so aggressively. <laughs> her fingers starting to cramp up. Anything love-wise, relationship-wise. We're experts. We're experts, yeah. obviously. <laughs> yeah. um, health-wise, you've got a lump that you think is a little suspicious. Tell us about it. Send yeah, us send a photo. Uh, a send video, a little sample anything. of it. We'll do a biopsy. Yeah. Like. Make sure the lighting is good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's what they get so, on yeah. the Patreon. We just get people to send their weird medical things. Yeah. We don't we don't have a license, but <laughs> yeah. so yeah. I drive and I don't have a license. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're never going to catch me. Exactly. Um you have a shout out. Oh yeah, I want to shout from out Instagram. Because this was one of our first DMs. It was from a nice young gentleman named Nigel. And he DM'd us. This was bad. I think you you had like seven thousand followers on TikTok. Like this, he's like an OG. He found us. Yeah. Because I think we were like trash talking Connecticut, and he was like, "Don't talk about my state like that." And like DM'd us that. But I think Nigel is like the best guy ever. Nigel, if you ever want a consensual smooch and you are above eighteen years old, let me know. I'll come to Connecticut. I'll give you a little kiss on the cheek. So shout out to Nigel. Yes. Shout out to you. I genuinely thought you were British because Nigel is such an English name. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he is. Maybe he came over and now he lives in Connecticut. Oh my God. What a transition. Nigel. <laughs> Hello, Nigel. <laughs> Hello, Nigel. It's it's Nigel. <laughs> uh, that's a girl. I feel like that's a, that's like yeah. a very Essex female voice. <laughs> yeah. Um, We have... Some very, well, not very interesting, kind of incredibly, um, wait a minute, hold up. 
Hold oh, up. I, I see some countries on here based on listener location that I'm genuinely surprised yeah. by. U.S. is number yeah. one. Not shocking. Yeah. Canada, number two. U.K., number three. All right, all right. On one of them, we got Nigeria. Ayo. Shout out. <laughs> That's not even Nigerian, I don't think. It's fine. <laughs> then we got Zambia. Oh. Trinidad and Tobago. Somalia. That one genuinely surprised me. And then Kenya. Yeah. Shout out to all my African brothers and sisters out there. I don't even know what accent that was. One listener. Yeah, the one, one the less than one percent. It's a single person in each one of those countries. Um, Hey, shout out to them. (laughs) Absolutely, shout out to them. Uh, Then we have the Netherlands, Australia, and then Barbados. Rihanna, it's her. It's Rihanna. (laughs) Yeah, Rihanna's listening. She's the one. Yeah, she's the one listener from Barbados. Oh my gosh, my stomach growled, and I think that you could hear it on the mic, because I heard it go up. Damn. That's funny. <laughs> should I leave it in? You should. It, should. it could be like a recurring character. <laughs> yeah. We give it a little theme song? Yes. Oh my gosh, whenever she makes an appearance. She's like a guest star. <laughs> yeah. Um, you went to New York. Yeah, I know. I keep, I keep going Three back. times. This, I mean... I think it's because you're only allowed to go to the state. You have like, there's like a limit yeah. on how long that you can be there before the, you know, the state officials are like, you need to get out. <laughs> yeah. You're driving tourists away. Yeah. They have me on like a couple watch lists now at the Amtrak station, but. Love to see you there, babe. <laughs> yeah. Right next to my name. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's us two at the top. So <laughs> where we belong. Uh... Yeah. It's about time. <laughs> um, yeah. You said that this time around you got like a authentic New York experience. Yeah, yeah, I felt like it was because like before I had done more of like the touristy things and you know, I went to Times Square and did all that, Washington Square Park, all that jazz. But this time I was like, let's go to like we went to like some smaller comedy clubs, like we were trying to really embrace the uh the more dingy gross side of the comedy world in New York City. Of course. It was it was pretty fun. It was cool. Um probably one of the most exciting things was I saw this rat like on the sidewalk, but it was standing up on two feet, <laughs> like guarding a trash can. Then like on the other corner, there was this giant cockroach, like the size of like Shaquille O'Neal's big toe, but like the complexion of Danny DeVito's peener, you know, if you know what I'm saying. It had a little like, um, what is it? Like those, the, the golden uh crosses around its neck <laughs> yeah, yeah his name was Vinny. hey yo i'm a painter okay <laughs> that's funny hey yo i'm coming in <laughs> that's what he said stop <laughs> okay <it's> no <laughs> that should be the recurring character <laughs> yeah. oh man okay uh, but yeah i i saw this rat and a cockroach and then there was like this homeless man holding a nerf gun because i thought he was pointing the nerf gun at me but then i realized he was pointing it like past me at that rat so I think they were engaged in some sort of, like, turf war. Because mm-hmm. I thought he was calling me a rat, but I'm like, I don't look like John Oliver. Like, come <gasps> on. I va- but- that's valid. That's a valid, uh, that's a valid dig. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, John Oliver. He looks more like a ferret, I would say, mm, than a, a rat, you know? Yeah. Rats can be cute. Yeah. Someone tweeted out, like, Tom Holland looks, is handsome in, like, a rat way. And I... <laughs> I get that because a lot of people are like he looks like the rat from Flushed Away. Yeah, which he has makes no sense. No lips. It's have you seen that photo of him, Benedict Cumberbatch, and Tom yes, Hiddleston, yeah. and they're like three men, no, no yes. last names or lips <laughs> to be seen. Yes. Oh, that was so good. Isn't it so weird that now bigger lips are so so common and expected that like when I see a person in the media who doesn't have like reasonably sized lips or full lips, it looks so weird. Yeah. Like you see beauty icons or whatnot from decades ago or even just the nineties and they're like, these these thin lipped MFers, <laughs> like what? Yeah. That's like eyebrows used to be like pencil thin and now everyone wants big caterpillars. And you know, like years from now people are gonna look back and be like, You looked horrible. Like this was <laughs> yeah. such a disgusting trend. Yeah. And that's called progress, baby. True. I love how women's bodies can go in and out of style. That's great. It keeps <laughs> us on our toes. Yeah. Um, what were we talking about? Rats, New York, uh, yeah. recycling. Yeah. Uh, you said you saw a man who was dancing yeah. fast. He was. There was no no music. 
no earbuds, no home. He just had vibes, you know? Like, he was dancing. He was going crazy in the sidewalk to nothing. And it was like, it was like 9 a.m. Like, it wasn't like, oh, maybe he had a long night out, unless his long night was still going at 9 a.m. True. But he was, he was jamming. And and so many people, like if I I kind I think I could like make a face and others would kind of recognize. I was a little like, what? How is this happening? <laughs> but so many people are like, only in New York City. But it's like, what? Like they just dismiss everything. <laughs> As like, oh, that's just New York City. Like what? What would have to happen for them to not just like, eh, shrug it off? Nine uh, eleven. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think. First of all, I love the idea of a man just doing that. Because one, it's like, wow, we really do have a mental health crisis in this country. <laughs> yeah. But it's also like, he gets it. He knows what it's <laughs> yeah. about. I'm almost jealous of him, you know? In a way, I feel like he's on a wavelength that we will never be able to access. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just want, I want to tap into that. Yeah. I say this, he's probably like suffering from some legitimate like <laughs> schizophrenic type of disorder. And we look at him and we're like, oh, that's so interesting. I wonder yeah. what his story mm. is. I just, yeah. I, just wanna, I just wanna be him. We're privileged and <laughs> yeah. I'm proud of that. Yeah, I'm not ashamed to admit that. Yeah, I don't have a mental illness and I'm not sorry about it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, you, let me think of other things that you've mentioned. Uh, a man almost punched your friend? Yeah, he was, like, we were just, like, coming out of the subway, and then this guy was like, don't do that again, and, like, raised his fist. And I was like, uh, what's going on? Because <laughs> like, I was like, what am I going to do in this situation? Like, Nothing. I can't do anything except be like, sir, no, please don't. <laughs> like, Violence is not the answer. Yeah, like, because I was also wearing a Sesame Street shirt, which I was like, in my Sesame Street shirt, what am I going to do out here to save someone? Nothing. Nothing. And as you lay there dying, bleeding out, you're going to hear the sunny day. <laughs> yeah. making the, like, but like the, the dark <laughs> version of that. Yeah, like, oh, like, did you ever watch the SNL sketch yeah. for Instead mm -hmm. of Joker? Yeah. <laughs> or they had that like in like a minor key or whatever. Yeah, the, the grouch. Or it could be like a, like a Catholic opera type of thing where they're like, <laughs> Sunny day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would also work. Uh, but that shirt, fun fact, Mark Norman, he complimented my shirt because we went to one of his shows and he was like, hey, nice shirt. Like as we were walking, I was like, ah. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I've, I I think I'm like just as famous as you. So I would say even more famous because <laughs> yeah. you're directly interacting with famous people. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a roach on your towel. Yeah, there was a cockroach on my towel. I like went to wipe my face and there was a cockroach on my towel. It was so scary. I was like trying to flick it off into the toilet, but then it didn't go into the toilet and it went into my duffel bag and it <gasps> crawled over all of my clothes and we had to like empty the bag and it was it was a whole thing, but um I made a friend. I have a pet now, so <laughs> That's so cute. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I the fact that hold on, was it your towel or like the towel in the hotel? No, it was my towel. That's personal. Yeah. See, if it was the hotel towel, it was like, okay, well that's that's her home. Like that's where she lives. Yeah. You were the rude one for trying <laughs> yeah. to like literally evict her. I'm the intruder. Yeah. But your towel, like she violated your own True. personal property. True. And I think New York might be a stand your ground state, so <laughs> yeah. Flick that little girl off. True. I just think that roaches, I like, I have respect for them. Yeah. Because they're so resilient, but they're also so nasty. Like, no True. offense, but, and the ones that can fly, no. No. I refuse to, I know, I don't support them just based on the fact that, like, one of them might touch me. Mm. And I feel like that's a violation. I feel like anytime an insect touches my skin without my consent, it's a human rights violation. That's what I'm saying. Right. Back when the cicadas were all over the area, so many of them would land on me, get in my bubble. I don't like that at all. They have the entire outside. Why do they have to go to me? Exactly. They have so much of the air. That's what I think is like, I don't go to bugs homes and disturb them. Why do they need to come into my house <laughs> yeah. and annoy me? Exactly. It's not I think, fair. Yeah, I think it's karma or something like these bugs 
all talk to each other and mm -hmm. like they have like a hit list like they know yeah because when i was like six i used to stomp on like <laughs> ant hills and i think that they remember me like all the bugs must chit chat yeah and they know who i am and now they constantly attack me i feel like that's i mean to be fair that's valid i support revenge i support avenging <laughs> yeah. your loved ones you think they have like a little board that has like photos like tiny <laughs> yeah. photos of the people and then there's like a, yeah. there's like x's on the ones they've already gotten yeah. They carry around like a little, um, like a locket with the photo of their loved ones that were lost. <laughs> yeah. And they look at it to remember what they're fighting for. Yeah, exactly. I think that, you know what? I don't know how many insects I've actually killed in my life. It's it probably it, it numerous. Like, I, there's no way of me knowing. Mm -hmm. It just makes me, it makes me feel like a god. <laughs> that I have the power to end yeah. a life. Isn't that insane? I'm yeah. ending a life. And it's quite hilarious to me that, like, we've killed things before that were alive, that had families, mm -hmm. not thoughts exactly, but they were living beings, and we crushed them yeah. and did not feel a single thing. And I know people are like, how could you murder another person? Like, how could, <laughs> pe how could commit, people commit war crimes? And I'm like, you know, we've or we're already at step one. Yeah. <laughs> we've already all checked yeah. that box. It's just, it's just a matter of, like, slightly moving up what we consider is worthless in terms of a life. Yeah. And we're all capable of it. Especially, like, the people who, like, hunt for sport. Those people are shooting, like, creatures that way more than me, like... Right? That's why I think, like, anyone who says that they hunt and they enjoy hunting... Fishing I'm okay with just because I don't value fish as much. I, I think they're <laughs> stupid and they don't taste that good. <laughs> it's odd to us that we as humans... Can you imagine the... Like, imagine trying to explain some human pastimes to, like, an alien species. Where they're yeah. like, yeah, we get in boats. Sometimes fathers will get in boats with their children. And they will kill another creature and then <laughs> eat them. And then eat... Cons and then heat up the flesh of that creature <laughs> yeah. and then consume it with their child as a bonding experience. Yeah. We sound... Like, psychopaths. Yeah. Or sometimes they'll go out and to, you know, basically find a, a deer, like a beautiful, innocent little creature, and then shoot it from a distance. Literally put a metal mm. bullet in between its eyes and then drag its lifeless carcass back to their, I don't know, Jeep truck or something. <laughs> yeah. And then they skin it. They remove the skin and they mount its head on their wall. And yeah, they make the, jerky with its meat. Yeah, yeah. The mounting of the head to me is like a trophy. What is it? Like the thing like, oh, a teardrop tattoo means you've killed someone. Like that's like the same thing to me. And it's even weirder because they don't behead the person they killed and then stick them in their house. Yeah. yeah. Imagine if they did, if that was just like a normal thing people did. That'd be pretty oh funny. My God. Even if it was accidental, like you got in a car accident and the other person died and you're like, can I get <laughs> you the head? Still and they were get like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> right, and then you just put it in your house, and you're like, this was the accident from 92. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, that'd be wild. That'd be disturbing. Not to be all deep, but, like, so many things that humans do, like, it's so weird. <laughs> like, we're so special for, like, acknowledging them, you know what I mean? Yeah, we definitely are, like, above everyone else in yeah, that regard. We're better than them because we talk so quietly that people have to lean in Yeah, when we speak. We're like Clint Eastwood. Just as old, too. <laughs> Clint Eastwood is, like, he has been, like, uh, grinding his teeth for the past 40 years. Do you know what I mean? I, like, yeah, I feel like he's been, like, 70 for, like, 30 years. <laughs> right? I don't think Clint Eastwood was a baby. I think he was just, like, born... <laughs> A like weathered 40. old man. Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. I I don't even know. Like, I've only ever known him or seen him, like, on TV or in movies as an old man. I have no idea what he even looked like when he was younger. It's like uh, Morgan Freeman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very... I would say Betty White, but I've seen a young Betty White. Yeah, me too. She was adorable. Those little dimples. Mm-hmm. What a cutie patootie. It's sad that she's going to die soon. Uh, and we know it's coming. That's the sad thing. I know. When you're 97 or like 150, I don't know how old she is. <laughs> you know, isn't it so creepy? Every day you wake up, you're like, this is probably the day. Yeah. Like, how do you go to meetings? Yeah. Or work? <laughs> like, at that point, it's like, just retire. Like, yeah. dude, if I hit 70 years old, I'd be lucky to make it to that age, first of all. <laughs> 
every day I'd wake up, I'd be like, well, I'm going to eat whatever I want and <laughs> yeah. do whatever I want. Yeah. Because this is probably going to be the last day. Like, I I don't understand how anyone would even bother working after that age. Because I feel like I already, at, like, 21, I already have, like, back pain and, like, my joints yep. hurt. So I'm like, imagine how I'm going to feel 50 years from now. I'm probably going to feel terrible all the time. The only reason that I want to get rich is because, number one, I want to be able to work where, like, I sit on my butt all day. <laughs> yeah. And because I want to be able to afford those, like, really expensive masseuses <laughs> yeah. that just, like, crack my back. <gasps> yes, those, like, chiropractor videos online. Oh, my oh. gosh. I want to get a back brace. I don't think that's going to help. <laughs> I don't know if that actually does anything. Uh, I've been trying not to, like, lean over and hunch when I write. Mm. Um so I like force myself to, I want to get an adhesive to stick on the back of my clothes <laughs> yeah. and then like a, another Velcro strip on the back of like my, um, my chair yeah. in my room. And so I'm s just stuck. Like, like I'm fused in, to yeah. it. Honestly, we should shark tank that. <laughs> yeah. We could make some good money off of that. We could make that. We can make a lot of money. Barbara would buy that in a heartbeat. She definitely would. Um, so... We are going to play a game now that's called Spin That Wheel. And spin it's that wheel. Spin That Wheel. Spin do, 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 do. Wheel. We just keep we just keep saying. Yeah, we could do it. Sp 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 spin that wheel. Spin, do, 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 spin that wheel. So <laughs> that reminds me of that vine where there was that target sign and the T was like blinking. Oh, yeah, like, it was like target. target. So this is a game that we technically, we introduced a few like episodes back where one person is playing like the hippie sort of like liberal college student niece or nephew mm. and the other one is playing like a Republican aunt, right? Yeah. That's the premise of the game. You spin a wheel. It's a variety of controversial issues. Whichever one it lands on, you have to debate, okay? That's the freaking game, baby. So today we are going to be playing each one of the characters Rachel, you want to flip a coin, see which one that you get? All right. Should I say heads or tails or actually flip a coin? Do you have a coin on you? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, then you can be the liberal. Okay, cool. I just say that because I like playing the Republican because <laughs> I can do like an accent. And oh, yeah. I think accents are funny. Yeah. But like only accents that are like white. <laughs> yeah. That's not true. I also like Nigerian accents. I like doing um Chinese accents. Do one right now. Um, No, that's do okay. It. Do it. Wow. The cowardice. Anyway, um, so we're going to spin a wheel. Uh, we're going to spin a wheel and we're going to see what topic mm. we are going to discuss today. Oh my God. Wow. It's climate change. Climate change. All right. Hippie cousin versus Republican aunt. Let's go. We're at dinner, Thanksgiving dinner. The conversation gets heated. Mm -hmm. Okay, setting the scene. Liberal cousin has wearing a little shirt that says, save the bees. <laughs> this triggers the Republican aunt. Why are you wearing that stupid little button? What, what are you talking about? This is a real cause that I'm passionate about. Don't call it stupid. I'm going to call it stupid because bees are not even real, okay? They are just really sad, obese wasps. No, the bees do so much for our environment. They pollinate. Name one thing. What, what, what do they do? do they, they don't pay taxes. But they don't need to pay taxes. You know how much work. Did you not see the bee movie? I'm, first of all, I do not watch educational documentaries. So no, I have never watched that <laughs> movie in Jerry my entire Seinfeld, life. It's with Jerry Seinfeld, though. You love Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, I know him. What is he? I want to, I want to say Jew. I, is that, <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to say that because you're probably going to get offended. <laughs> Yeah, I, th I would get offended, actually. So we can we can forget about Jerry Seinfeld and get back to the environment. The bees do so much for us. They're super important to the ecosystem. Like what? What do they do? Huh? They pollinate. They produce honey. They help all the other plants grow. And we need to have lots of plants and lots of trees. I've been pollinating my entire life. Sometimes I see plants and I rub them against each other and that's pretty much the same thing. No, that's not that's not the same and it's not realistic for you to be going around and pollinating the entire earth. That's what the bees do for us automatically. I don't trust this. 
I'm sorry, but I can't. I can't trust animals that just do things like that with no explanation. What do they gain out of it? Aren't they like little slaves to that queen that they have? Yeah, well, I, well, I thought you would like the whole slavery aspect of the bees, though. Wow. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Just because I have a little Confederate statue in my room that I look to and I say goodnight to every single night, you think that I have, I'm have? i in support of a slavery. That is not mm, true. All right. I'll pretend that I believe you. Oh my God! Wow, what a comeback! <laughs> my, is this that great liberal sense of humor that I keep hearing about? Hey man, what the? Heck? <laughs> I just can't think. This this is the problem. I've seen you on your little posts on Instagram talking about climate change and how we need to save the bees because. I don't even know they're dying out or something. Yeah. I'm sorry, but I got stung by a bee once in the summer of 2013. And let me tell you, I don't care if they die. Well, you should care. Have you not read or seen anything Greta Thunberg has been saying lately? That little s- s- Swedish uh, Twinkie girl, <laughs> yeah. I know her. Her ponytail is too tight. Her hairline is going to start receding. Someone needs to tell hey, her that. this feels like a targeted attack. <laughs> you said it, not me. Oh. <laughs> you you said it, not me. I'm just sorry, but I don't believe. I can't believe the climate is changing. I mean, doesn't it normally do that? It's called seasons. That's how it works. Yeah, I mean, that is how it works. But if you look at the trends over the years, you can see a dramatic increase in the global temperature. I can, I can send you some infographics on Instagram, okay? Oh, have you read any of the actual papers? Hmm, <laughs> since you're so freaking smart. Name one. The the Al Gore paper. Unbelievable. <laughs> this is what I mean. Y'all just believe in stuff. I have never seen the climate change like in person. I don't think. And that's, I don't have object permanence. If I can't see it, it does not exist to me. Yeah. So you haven't noticed how it's gotten a lot hotter over time? I'm sorry, but that's called summer sweetie pie. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to work. I see you when you were a kid you used to go out into the woods and you just start putting leaves in your mouths and munching on them. And I think that's where all of this stems from. No, no, come on, Aunt. There's so many there's so much data and evidence out there. You can see there's so many more extremes in weather and things that are happening. There's physical evidence that this exists and this is a serious problem that we need to fix. And how would we fix that? I see you sneaking in a plastic straws. You don't. I know your little Instagram friends don't see you talking about save the turtles, my sweet patootie. I see you getting the little plastic straws. You're part of the problem. Okay, but as an individual consumer, my impact is very minuscule. We need to we need to get the big businesses that make up like 70% of all the whatevers to get on it. That's so unfair. You're expecting these oil tycoons who worked so hard being the (laughs) sons of millionaires, worked so hard to turn themselves into slightly richer millionaires. And I'm just supposed to, what, ask them to stop, what, what is it, stop accidentally spilling oil in the ocean? Things happen. Things happen. I mean, the other day I broke a plate. I don't, I don't think that's fair. That's I don't think not that's the fair. same. That is not the same comparison at all. Breaking a plate versus spilling oil into the ocean, killing how many animals, how much of the living creatures in the ocean? Okay, I've seen the things that are in the ocean, and let me tell you something, sweetheart. We ain't missing much. I've seen what they look like. They're not cute. Nobody wants to catch one of those and put them up on their wall. <laughs> You don't want one of those singing fish on your wall? Come on. Absolutely not. Those things are demonic. (laughs) Those things are creepy. One time I went into a a bait store and they had one of those things. And I swear to you, I swear in my life, it turned to me and it said, you're going to die. And I said, what? (laughs) What are you talking about? And it said, you're going to die. Oh, wow. And it just went right back to singing the second somebody else walked by it. Mm. Something's not right with those things. I think that might be something with you. Okay, that's not... First of all, I've been tested for pretty much everything, (laughs) and I came back clean as a whistle. Mm, Okay, that's not what my mom told me, but... Okay, first of all, my sister, a.k.a. your mother, let me just say that she's not the sharpest Christian in the Bible, okay? (laughs) She's not someone that you should be listening to based on mental health. Please. I used to catch her in her room, crying and listening to freaking Stevie Nicks. And I said, what are you doing? And she said, it's me time. 
I'm having me time. And I said, there's something wrong with you. Hey, everyone needs me time. There's no need to no need to shame that. Okay, first of all, there were two kinds of me time, all right? And the first time, it was her listening to sad music. The second sort of me time, all I could hear coming from her room was a very light vibration. And I said, oh my goodness. <laughs> That's where my electric toothbrush went. Mm. Mm. She used mine, too. Ooh. She had her own. Yeah. I don't trust your mother. I love her. She's my sister, but I don't like her, not one bit. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, especially since we're all she's yeah, sitting she can right hear next me. to she's me. Sitting we're right next all to me. at the at the table. I know right that. Now. I know she's right there. <laughs> she can't hear me. No, no, she's playing Candy Crush on her phone, so it's fine. Mm, yeah, she, she can't hear what I'm saying. Well, this segment's getting a little bit too preachy, so we're gonna end <laughs> right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, I can't wait. I can't wait for that to be like if we ever if this podcast actually really takes off. I feel like someone like Steven Crowder is gonna take a segment of that <laughs> yeah. and be like. Liberals think that they're funny. Yeah. Uh, this is them talking about climate change. Uh, that's not even how he sounds. Let me. What is? What does he sound like? Uh, liberals. Uh, I can't do it. I can only do Ben Shapiro. Hypothetically, for the sake of <laughs> argument, liberals think that this is the funniest thing ever. Um. So, uh, liberals think that this is uh, this is comedy. Th- this is comedy to liberals. It's essentially uh, the Republican aunt is uh, has an accent and is clearly, you know, um, an idiot and doesn't believe in climate change. And then the the hippie cousin is reasonable and uh, bring, uh, brings about data. They're not making fun of that character, but the Republican, you know, she gets made fun of. Like this is what this is what the constitutes as comedy to uh, to liberals. I think that was a, a decent impersonation. Yeah, that was good. My my sister has big yeah, mommy milkers. Uh, mommy milkers, uh, feed me, feed me. Um, she I can't I can't wait until she has children because then she can start lactating and then she can send me her milk in tiny little bottles and then I can chug on them. I can drink them. Those are my versions of five hour energy. I hope he sues us. I hope he tweets at yeah. us and I hope he sues us. So incredible. <laughs> yeah. So that was the end of that game. Oh, we're gonna start. We're gonna play. Another game that's just called Guess That Noise. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make some noises, and they're just gonna be short little sweet noises. And then Sarah, you just have to give me like a short description of what each noise is. So it's sort of like a a little a little partnership thing. I make the noise, you give the little explanation. Okay. Here's the first one. <laughs> Sounds like an ex of mine. <laughs> Oh, no. Um, no, I've never dated. Do it again. Yeah. Okay, that's clearly a donkey. Yes. My... Donkey. Donkey. All right, I'll give you another one. Okay. Ooh. That sounds like a skateboarder falling. <laughs> no. Whoa. It's like those like video game effects. <laughs> you know that that scream that like stock. Audio oh, scream yeah. that's always using like every yeah you know the one the infamous one. Gosh, imagine being the person who screamed for that. Like, do they get like royalty? <laughs> any sort of like payments? I feel like they were probably just got like a hundred dollars after they record it, and they're like, "All right, see ya." And then like, damn. Now they've probably been used in how many movies? Dang, that's how these contracts get you, man. Anyway, like the girl who made that uh eyebrows on fleek. Yeah. Peaches Monroe. That was yeah. her username. And obviously she can't copyright it because it was like a random thing she posted and then all these corporations who literally use it. Yeah. It sucks. She should have been making money off of it, but I don't know how that would have even happened. Yeah. Shout so out Peaches to her. Monroe. Yeah. Yep. Shout out to you, girl. You literally uh, on a whim created an iconic phrase. Yeah. Anyway, go on to I, I don't know what that I don't know what oh, that yeah. moan was supposed to be. <laughs> That's fine. Keep going. Okay. <gasps> that sounds like a a a, a sportsman like working. <laughs> yeah, a gym bro. A gym bunny. Speaking of bunnies, do you remember that like guy who was an owner of the one like NFL team or some schnitzel, and he said something racist or whatever, and people were like, "That's ridiculous. You're making money off of black people, but you don't have any respect for them." And he had a girlfriend that was obviously like thirty years younger than him, and, like a model had that. Very like plastic surgeried up look where they kind of look like a melted bag. And yeah. in an interview, <laughs> in an interview, she was just like, We play games, we like to joke around. He calls me his little bunny rabbit. And the interviewer was like, What? What was that? He calls you what? And then she just, she was like, His little bunny rabbit. And he's like, does, does he actually call you that? She says, No. And I think about that every time. 
Every time someone says the word bunny or rabbit, she said I think no. of that moment. Yeah, and she was like, no. <laughs> uh, that's funny. That's so funny. I feel like interviews are th- so perfect because you can, especially if they're live, you can just say whatever you want. Yeah. And the interviewer just has to roll with the punches. Yeah. Like, it would be so exciting. Well, if you ever, if you ever, uh, get to the level where you can do interviews because i always do interviews like in my head when i'm in my room alone oh 100 but if you ever get to the level where you can actually do an interview have you okay th- not to bring up mark normand again but he's got some funny interviews like if he goes on like morning shows like if he's in the town mm-hmm. doing stuff like he'll just be like an <laughs> idiot on there and it's so funny that would be so great i could be like i've never actually made a joke my whole life like i don't I just say things and people <laughs> laugh. Like, I don't know what comedy is. It'd yeah. be so good. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, it's so juicy, especially yeah. if they're not, like, they themselves are not a comedian, so it's not, like, a late-night thing. They're just a regular interviewer because then you, yeah. they don't know how to respond yeah. to any sort of, like, random, yeah. you know, like, statements. So they just, they're just <laughs> like, um, okay, that's all right. That's very interesting. Just like never, right? And you never answer a single one of the questions. You know, you never get invited back. Yeah. Like that's the ultimate dream to me. That's how you know you've made it. Absolutely, baby. (laughs) I don't know why I did that. That was so sad and disturbing. Oh, was that a bonus noise? noise? That can be our... (laughs) That's also the the final noise I'm going to make when I die. (laughs) (laughs) my fam is gonna be near my deathbed like whoa what i think that was just her entering hell (laughs) yeah yeah she's so talented i would oh my goodness i'm not even kidding i would love to do voice work for literally anything like i would narrate an audiobook of just like quotes from fascists if it meant (laughs) i could legitimately start making like audiobooks you or You should whatnot. like put yourself on what is that like Fiverr or whatever and do like yes! a bunch of like freelance. As a freelance like narrator. Oh yeah. my <laughs> gosh, that would be phenomenal. People I bet people would pay for that. I still think your like BBC voice is like the funniest thing ever. It would be great. I mean, just go to my email. True. Contact me, baby. Get that coin. I feel like I'd be really good at like narrating. Yeah. Cause I think my voice acting is limited. I can only do like a handful of characters and they're all like very creepy <laughs> or childlike, but I would love to do like narrations, you know? Yeah. He gently caressed the velvet curtains. I don't know. You can tell I'm not like a novel writer. <laughs> I don't know what, I don't even know what a velvet curtain is. Maybe it's a euphemism. <gasps> Rachel. Yo, she bad. Rachel. I feel like if your lips feel like velvet, I feel like you need to go to a doctor. (laughs) Like, that would be a little concerning, I'm not going to lie. I mean, it would be bougie, don't get me wrong. But it's also like, oh, well, you need to go to to a hospital. (laughs) I think that's, we've exhausted ourselves. I don't have anything more to say. Um, And that's all we got to say on that. Tune in next week for another episode. See ya. This has been The Boardroom with Sarah and Rachel. The Boardroom is edited by Rachel Nicewander. Stephen Duransky is our graphic designer, and our theme music is by Doug Maxwell and Media Right Productions. Support the podcast by donating on Patreon or Anchor. Links in the description. Got a question? Email us at boardroombusiness at gmail.com. Or DM us on Instagram at boardroompodcast. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to The Boardroom on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts. Like, comment, rate, and review. Tell us you love us. Tell us you hate us. Solicit us. We'll take anything.